What's up everybody? What's good? Welcome back to Better Investing. Today we're going to be talking about top water. Where you should use it and the lures that you should be using this year. So, here in the south, we are already in top water season. Matter of fact, we've been in top water season pretty much since a, well, it's now May, so since last month. Even the end of March, we actually, <coughs> sorry about that, sinuses. But since the end of March, we pretty much have been in top water season. Now, some people say you can't take uh, catch bass doing the spawn on top water. That's a lie that you can do. As a matter of fact, spawning season really runs between March to about May. In, the th in that time, within that little period right there, you can catch bass on top water. You can because really, they don't like anything hovering above their bed. They don't. And they will go to attack anything that sits there above their bed. But that's something for another video. Probably next year. Any case, I got my frog box out. You know. Plus a couple of extra here on the side that I'm going to uh, run through and, and we're going to talk about it. Now, for you guys up north, you haven't made it yet. You haven't really, you know what I'm saying? Y'all still up there pretty much, you know, going through the going through, you know what I'm saying, with, with that cold weather. Believe you me, I know, spent a lot of time in the Great Lakes, especially in the winter time, it was cold as balls. So, you know, my hat's off to y'all, I'm out of it. I miss the snow, but I'm out of it. But okay, here we go. Let's start with top water. So the first thing that I am going to go with is a traditional frog. It's a traditional frog. This frog is made by Guggen Squad. And also, I want you to pay attention to the theme or the colors that I pick out of my box. Again, y'all know me. I like to, you know what I'm saying, I like to kiss, keep it simple, stupid. That's just what it is. Um, no games. It just, fishing is a simple thing. Just keep it simple, you can't go wrong. But the traditional frog. The traditional frog is the frog that you want to use when you have a lot of gunk slop uh, that you have on the water that you know you want to be able to get into get the bass attention let him blow up on it you fight him out of that gunk and slop you do what you do you have some fun with it that's what this is for you know you fire it up even skipping it you can also skip it up on the trees uh, skip it in up on the docks and rest of those fish bass um, out from under that cover. You know, I like this because, you know, with the pointy tip here, the bait walks pretty daggum well. Now, most of the time, you want a traditional frog with a kill on the bottom, which helps to uh, walk it from side to side uh, fairly easy. It makes it easier to walk from side to side. So, I mean, it's a cadence, cadence, cadence. It's a cadence that you you kind of wanna uh, you're gonna have to get to know and master to actually uh, throw this frog. And like I say, you can throw it in the slop, you can throw it in the lily pads, thick mats, uh, in the weeds, tules. You can throw this virtually anywhere, and you won't get hung up. You know, so. In a sense, again, like I said, we're going to keep it short, uh, short and sweet. This guy is the all-arounder. This is the guy that goes any, any, anywhere and everywhere. I had a brain fart just then. Good gracious. I don't know what's going on with me. But, yeah, this guy right here, 
can go anywhere, everywhere you need him to go. Virtually. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Got to go and be kind of hard to uh, hang up, but mainly because if you look at the hooks, the hooks is kind of pointed back down into the body so that it's hard to catch. It's hard to catch on anything. Now, the only, I don't mess with these hooks because the frog, it collapses pretty easy. The only time that I actually will bend these hooks out a little bit where they're pointed up to get a better uh, hookup rate will be, you know, if I'm fishing more open water. But other than that, I leave it alone, let it stay just like it is. It collapses real good, it walks good. Remember that. Have some fun with it. This is your guy, Outer Lion guy. So if I was to put it, um, this would be like Cordell's. Yeah, Cordell Stewart from the Steelers. Pretty much should go anywhere or prime time. Put him anywhere, he can get the job done. Sticking in that same uh, category, I forgot the name of this frog, but if you can notice something about the difference of it, is the tail is a little bit different and actually with this frog the tail is actually one side is trimmed slightly shorter than the other well I do that because you know it helps to walk it a little bit better and especially with a, a hollow body frog where this one is like pretty much uh, see-through it the plastic is a whole lot softer so it's a little bit harder to walk so if you trim that tail, let me put this frog down. So if you trim it one side just shorter than the other, it helps to walk that frog a little bit better. Now this is a frog that I have actually trimmed up and it, my finger will catch. Hook it sharp. <laughs> I stuck my damn gum cell. But uh, this is going to be more so my open water frog this is going to be my open water frog where you know i'm not throwing it in the cover i'm not throwing it under docks pitch it well you know skipping it under docks pitching on the trees and nothing like that this is straight open water i'm not going through any mats the hooks is up the hook set well the hook up ratio phenomenal but that's because i bent the hooks up just slightly just a little bit that's all you need and your, your hookup rate would be a whole lot better but it still falls within the same line as, and I'm looking myself, hurt like a mother, but still falls in line with the traditional frog. Basically the same thing, just one that's been trimmed up. Now, from that, we go to, if I see it in here, which, Ah, there we go. I'm sorry. Is a popping style frog. The popping frog. Now, the thing about the popping frog is you can see the difference here. The popping frog has a cup lip. It's a cup lip, whereas this one is an arrowhead type frog. So, what the uh, popping frog does is Basically, <laughs> oh man, I mean, <laughs> my mind went somewhere else. But in any case, with the cup face, it is it is there, and you can fish it in pretty much the same area for a longer distance time. And you can you can actually walk a cup face frog, a popping frog. You can walk it also just as well as you can walk the traditional frog. Now, where do you fish these? You fish these. Not in the gunk or in the uh, in the lily pads. Now, anybody who's if you've ever fished, you've seen the lily pads, and you notice that they make most time a wall. So you want to pop this right along the side of that wall, or right alongside the uh, thick matted brush um, next to the tulies, but. It's going to be more so for open water right next to the cover. Right next to the cover. And you pretty much pop this 
you know, you don't want to, it don't take a large twitch of the rod, just a slight, you know, tap. That's all it takes. And you'll see that it would displace water and it'll make a little bit of a sound. It'll be like a bloop, a blooping sound. A blooping sound, that would be the best thing for me to tell you of how this frog will be. But this frog is also made by Google Squad. I've been trying out a lot of their baits. Um, their soft plastics, I like. So I'm fit to give their frogs a try and see how they work um, and see how, how good they are. Next up is, hold on, before we go to that, which we have a, another style popper, or it kind of took his name from the pop R, if I can get into it without, you know, pricking my finger, is the Google Squad blooper, blooper. Now, as you can tell, this has a cup face, you know what I'm saying, popping style, but it is the pop R. Notice again, the color from of all the colors that I've used. Again, pay attention because it's very, very simple. You know, you only need four colors, but we'll get over to that in a little bit. But again, with the popping style, same as the popping frog, the only difference is you have the treble hook. So you cannot fish this in uh, too close to grass mats. You will get hung up. You know what I'm saying? The treble hooks will catch. Make your life a living H-E double hockey sticks. Had to clean it up for you too. <laughs> but uh, back to it. You can fish this over grass mats. Be all honest with you. You could. You know what I'm saying? Get... Fish it over gas, uh, grass mat, gas. Do I need to get gas in my car? But anyway, fish this over grass mat, but once you get to a hole in that mat, you pause it and you work it in that one area for this. For this, you work the outside edges. Just the same as this, the popping frog, the pop R basically, or the blooper, you work on the outside edges of the grass mats, lily pads, uh, of the vegetation. This is what you do with that. Where I'm gonna put you? Where else we got? Ah, now, this is a, I'm having a hard time getting into these baits. There we go. And I'm a little nervous cause the hooks are pretty dang up well, they're brand new. And they're pretty sharp coming out of the box from what I've seen from the uh, Guggen baits. This would be, I would say, kind of a, correct me if I'm wrong out there, but you're looking at more so of a spook uh, or as they call it, like a hound or target bait, however you want to call it. But... It is a uh, also a cup face. With this one, you want to fish this next to the docks. Um, you want to stay away from vegetation, really. A lot of vegetation, really. But how this works is you want to cast this up. Uh, if you're fishing from a boat, you want to cast this towards the shallows. And you want to work it back. Now, your rod twitches. Very subtle. Because what it does is it a walk and then it'll glide off. Walk, glide off. That is how that works. And as you're coming up to your target, as you twitch, twitch, as you get to your target, you wanna twitch, stop, and let it glide. How I like to do it, I like to let it glide towards the target. So if I'm fishing a dock, I like to twitch it until I get come up next to a, uh, one of the um, dot piles or beans, however you want to call it, and I would twitch it to the point where it would go towards the dot pile or beam, however you want to call it. So, also made by Google Squad, this is the Hound, I believe it is. Yes, 
the Goofy Squad Hound, which, again, pay attention to the color. It's very simple. Now, last but not least, and a few honorable mentions I'm going to say is the, I call them the propeller style baits. You know, let me put you right there. Put you right there. And put you right there because I need to, I need to organize, man, because I am looking like a straight bum out here with my chapter box. For real, for real. I'm looking like a bum. But we're going to say, if I can get this open. And I'm going to do a video on these two uh, eventually. Let's talk the new Goofy Squad Revolver. And without hooking myself, hold on. The Whopper Plopper. Two excellent uh, excellent. Two, two excellent baits. Two excellent baits. That you've actually seen me fish this uh, last year. This is something new on the market. Uh, the Google Squad Revolver. Um, I haven't really got to play with it or do a review on it. Um, although I like the body of it. And which I'm pretty well used to the propeller. However you want to call it. On the back but this in the waffle plopper are more for open water situations now if you find you like I call them little paths in the uh, in the vegetation I call them little paths so what y'all would do is fire that up say there's a uh, you can see it it's like a little roadway in between the Uh, I don't know why it's so hard for me to say the name of that darn thing. Lily pad. I don't know what in the world is going on with me. But in any case, you see the little roadway in between the lily pads or in between the matted vegetation or whatsoever. You can actually cast this into it, but you got to make sure that you have a clear path out because the grass will get caught up in the propeller and muck it up and you'll start to get a lot of line twist. I don't know how, well, I know the Whopper Plopper, how that runs and that will happen. The Google Squad Revolver, I don't really know. Um, I have not fished with it yet. I will be uh, fishing with it, <gasps> oh, excuse me, this, uh, this year. So hopefully, you know, I can get you a review on it once I'm done. But for those prop style bait, they're about like a uh, buzz bait. They're about like a buzz bait. So you cast them out. The only difference is, is these guys are float. Whereas a buzz bait, you have to engage your reel and reel automatically. But you can still, like the popper, run that right along the uh, edges of your vegetation, whether it be the lily pads, tulies. Matted grass, so forth, so on. You can run that right on the edge of it. You actually can toss this up close to laydowns, but you don't want to get too close where you get hung up. But you can cast it up close to laydowns and you'll be just fine. But color, let's talk color because you know your boy like to keep it uh, short, sweet, simple. Um, if you notice with the uh, traditional frog really this side does not matter which is the top that don't matter that side does that's it I mean for real for real some kind of white chartreuse bone in black that's all you need that is all you need for top water. You don't need no more, no less. Now, if you want to go with more, you can. I mean, that, that's your prerogative. 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 
That's, 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 if that's what you want to do, you can do that. But to be all honest with you, you only need four colors. That's it. Four. Line, line selection, rod selection, um, fairly easy. If I'm using, well, we're going to start off with line. Nine times out of ten, I am going to be using anywhere from 30 to 50 pound braid when I'm frogging. That's just what it is. Unless I am fishing on top of some very thick lily pads, then I will go up to about 60 to 65 pound braid. Now, if I'm fishing anywhere else, 30 will do you just fine. 30 pound braid will do you just fine. Now, biggest of the time, I'm going to be using braid, except for if I'm using the uh, hound or the spook walking style bait. At that point, I will use straight floral or a braid to leader um, because when you cast this out and if you're working this on braid, braid floats and it has a tendency to get caught up on the hooks. So I will use a braid to leader. So nine times out of 10, since this is open water, I will probably go from a 30 pound braid to a uh, 12 pound fluorocarbon or either uh, monofilament leader. Rod selection, rod selection. I like to use heavy, heavy and extra heavy, you know, but I still want uh, a little bit of a soft tip uh, for the hook set, especially when I'm using the uh, spook style bait. Uh, heavy, when I'm fishing more traditional frogs, like I say, I still want that little bit of a uh, soft tip because uh, it makes it easier to walk the traditional frog or even walk the spook. But at the same time, I still have the backbone that when I have to fight them out of the daggum gunk and, and, and fight them out of cover, I can do that. You know what I'm saying? So again, toss it up, up, uh, blah. I can't talk today. I really can't. So again, get you a heavy rod uh, with a fast action tip. Now, if you uh, fish in the spook, get you a braid to leader. I like to tie the uh, double uni, but in case you fire it up there, you know what I'm saying, short twitches of the rod, the fish bangs on it, you put it to them, you know what I'm saying? You give them that womp womp, the fight is on, you snatch the weave out of them, get them to the boat, get them in. That's all it is. That's all it is. So with that being said, that's about it for top water. But hey, if you enjoyed or you learned anything, you know, holla at your boy. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And do, do, do hit that like button. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Help your boy out. I'm trying to get to uh, 100, uh, 100 subscribers, you know what I'm saying, at some point in time. I think I'm only like 13 subscribers, subs away. But, you know, y'all just help your boy out, you know what I'm saying. I very much appreciate it. But with that said, I love you. Veteran Bassin, stay up. One.